It was a beautiful fall day on the island of Sodor. All the engines were working very hard. Sir Topham Hatt came to Tidmouth Sheds. He had exciting news. Gordon is to take the new mayor of Sodor on a special tour of the island, he announced. Gordon was thrilled, but then he had a thought. Who will take the express, sir? he asked. The other engines were excited. Pulling the express was an important job. Everyone wanted to be chosen, but Sir Topham Hatt chose Emily. When Sir Topham Hatt left, Emily was very happy, but Gordon wasn't impressed. The express is the longest passenger train on the island, he sniffed. I always cross the island twice by tea time. You'll never do that. I've got big wheels and I'll do my best, said Emily. Big wheels don't make a big engine, boasted Gordon. Everyone knows I'm the best. Thomas thought Gordon was showing off. Twice before tea time, he puffed. That will be hard. But Emily wasn't listening to Thomas. I'm going to be as good as Gordon, she said eagerly, and she steamed away as fast as she could. Emily puffed into Knapford Station. She was looking forward to taking the express, but it was very, very heavy. Bust my buffers, she gasped as she slowly pulled out of the station. But she pulled away too soon and left the brake coach behind. Emily puffed with all her might. She was determined to be fast. Emily had crossed the island once in good time. I am as good as Gordon, she puffed proudly. Emily had to wait for Edward at the crossing. Edward went as fast as he could, but it wasn't fast enough for Emily. Hurry up, slow coach, she cried, or you will make me late. Edward felt sad, but Emily just steamed on. Emily stopped in Maithwaite Station. The express was a guaranteed connection with Bertie the bus. But Bertie hadn't arrived. He had a flat tire and was running late. Emily tried to wait. She counted to ten, twice. But she felt as if her boiler would burst. I'm going to be the slowest engine on Sodor, she cried, and it's not my fault. And she puffed away. When Bertie arrived, Emily had already left. Emily needed to take on water, but James was at the water tower. He was pulling the slow goods train. Emily wanted to go first. It doesn't matter if you are late, she said. You must wait your turn, said James crossly. Express trains don't wait, said Emily. And she left without taking on water. Emily went faster than ever. Her coaches rocked and rolled, and her passengers were biffed and bumped and bounced. Finally, Emily could see Brendam Docks up ahead. Twice before tea time, she puffed happily. I am as good as Gordon. Then there was trouble. Emily slowed down. What's happening to me? She cried. She went slower and slower. Emily had run out of water. She huffed and puffed, but she had no steam left. Finally, Emily came to a complete stop. Sir Topham Hatt arrived on board James. He was very cross. You should have waited, said Sir Topham Hatt sternly. And now you have caused confusion and delay. You left the brake coach, 
stranded Bertie's passengers and bumped your coaches. You must learn to be more patient. Emily knew Sir Topham Hatt was right. She felt very bad. She was only trying to be as good as Gordon. I'm sorry, sir, she said sadly. James pulled Emily into the docks. Then he went back to collect the express. Now I need an engine to take the slow goods train, said Sir Topham Hatt. Emily had an idea. May I take it, sir, she said. If I promise to go slowly, Sir Topham Hatt thought it was a grand idea. The slow goods train needs lots of patience, he said. Emily was pleased. She was determined to do a good job. So after she took on water and lots of coal, Emily buffered up to the slow goods train. She stopped at all the right stations. And she let all the other engines go first. She stopped at a signal. Thomas was waiting there. Hey, Thomas. I am learning patience, Emily puffed. But if only I could learn it faster. Thomas had to laugh. All the blood that we're bleeding could fill up a broken heart. The secrets we're keeping could be used to light the dark. 